on this episode, we're going to be talking about why to study the Old Testament. Welcome to this episode of The Word Unbound. The Word Unbound exists to help Christians be more biblically minded by answering common questions through the lens of Scripture. My name is Conrad Mills, and I'm here today with Will Sanderson. Hey, Conrad. Hey, what's up? How you doing? This is this is good. This is good. This is fun. Um, <laughs> what what is, what are your thoughts as we head into episode five? Episode five. Um, man, I just I just pray this is being a blessing to people. Yeah, uh, I, I'm I'm loving diving into scripture mm-hmm. and looking at these different questions, and I just pray that's a blessing mm-hmm. to. Uh, anyone who would hear us. Yeah. And if, if we, if we haven't, if you haven't seen or, or heard on Instagram, we have a kind of a Q and a thing after every uh, episode that we'll post, you know, do you have any questions about yeah. this? Mm-hmm. Feel free to ask us a question. We want to be helpful to you. If there's something we're yeah. not answering that you want us to answer, let, let's do it. You For know, sure. we want to, we want to be a resource to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can also, if, you, if you're not on Instagram, you can also email us at the word unbound at gmail.com. Uh, wow. We just want to be a resource to you. We want to help. Look uh, at that. But today we're going to be, uh, on this episode, we're going to be talking about why to study the Old Testament. Yeah. Why to study the Old Testament. Why because study the Old Testament. And it's a neglected part. I mean, in, you know, in modern evangelical circles today, we, you know, the Old Testament's often neglected. I mean, I think, yeah. you know, I, you know, at this church, I, I've heard the Old Testament preached and taught, but I, I can't remember the last time I, I other than that, that I've heard, you know, the Old Testament really referenced or, or focused on. Yeah. So why it's, why is it important to study the Old Testament? Well, um, first it's 75% of your Bible. Yeah. <laughs> and so, uh, I, I think that can be a little convicting sometimes when we think about it, mm-hmm. uh, that the letters of Paul make up less than I think 5% of your Bible, like total mm-hmm. volume wise. And so it can be a little convicting when we begin to think that we spend about 90% of our time and about 5% of the Bible. Uh, that's that a good be, 5% of the Bible. Though. It's a great 5% of the Bible. And we are the, we are in the church. We are uh-huh. new covenant believers and these are letters written to the church. So, I mean, we rightfully so spend a good amount of time in there, but I think you're mm-hmm. right. Um, you know, I think of my friends that I know that are in ministry, other pastors and, and, um, and I would, I feel like I probably preach the Bible, the old Testament, uh, more than, more than they have. Um, and I, I'm not entirely sure why, and that's not to brag or anything like that, but it is to say that, and, and it's not like I do it disproportionately. I think it's like 20% of my sermons have mm-hmm. been from the first Testament. Uh, but it, it's important to know because one, it's God's word, right? All mm-hmm. God's word, all scriptures, God breathes and profitable to two, two Timothy yeah. 16. Right. Yeah. And so that means even the weird parts and judges, um, where, you know, talk, you know, Fox's tails are being tied together and set on fire. That's still God's word as much mm-hmm. as Romans eight is mm-hmm. right. Uh, there's still something there for you. Um, but furthermore, I think just, you know, when we talk about the first Testament, um, I think it's ignored because uh, it's confusing because mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't feel like it applies to us. It's very Eastern. It's very ancient and it just feels inaccessible in, in a way that, you know, um, you know, the, even the gospels don't quite feel that way. Cause there's some Western culture in that, you know, mm-hmm. a little bit of Roman culture that we can kind of understand. Um, and uh, you know, we, we recognize emperors and, and governors more than we recognize judges, mm-hmm. right. And Kings. And so, um, when we when we think about the Old Testament, uh, we need to be uh, looking at it because if you read Hebrews, you're not going to appreciate Hebrews unless you really know Leviticus. You're, mm-hmm. you're just not. Uh, Matthew is all pointing to how Christ is fulfilling this Davidic covenant, this promise that was given centuries ago and how he is the king to sit and rule on the throne of David. I mean, and that's going to fall short for you if you don't understand what that is and the history that goes in that. But I think more importantly, because if you were to summar up, summarize the whole Bible into two words, you'd say it's, it's God's glory, right? Mm-hmm. That's what the Bible's about. And you see Yahweh, you see God the Father in a unique and different way in the First Testament. Not that you can't see it or can't understand that from the New Testament, but it's different. And um, I, think it's a, I think it's helpful. I think we yeah. need to know it. And also the Bible assumes biblical literacy, uh, biblical understanding. And so when you read the New Testament, it assumes that you know the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Well, and think about how many, I mean, the New Testament quotes the Old Testament. Yeah. I mean, a tremendous amount of times. I don't know how many, Bi- but Bible it does. trivia question for yeah. you. What three books are quoted the most in the New Testament? Deuteronomy. Um, okay. That's number three. Deuteronomy. Uh, Leviticus. Psalms. Uh, Psalms. And Isaiah. Okay. okay. So I, I'm pretty sure it goes Psalms, Isaiah, Deuteronomy. Okay. Uh, so uh, well, those yeah. are all books to know. I mean, those they're are all books to know. That's a good Bible trivia question. So. There you go. 
Yeah. Uh, that's helpful. I mean, the thing is, too, I mean, everything is, is building upon the foundation that the Old Testament has mm-hmm. laid. And I think, too, you know, we, we you know, in, in our culture today in society, we, we like to, you know, Christians and it like to kind of over, you know, gloss over the, the wrath that's in the Old Testament that mm-hmm. God does, you know, that God does show. And that's part of his character just as much as his yeah. love sending Jesus Christ to yeah. die for sinners. I mean, that's it's just as much of who he is and, and God hates sin. And we see that. Um, but I think that's a big part of why we don't like to go to the old Testament as a lot yeah. is because we have to wrestle with some things that, you know, maybe you do in the old, in the new Testament, but maybe it's more vivid in the old Testament. Yeah. Well, and, and I even think of, you know, you brought up at the beginning of this episode that, you know, uh, we, we do those questions mm-hmm. afterwards. And I think of a dear brother that asked the question, you know, what do I do if I get bored reading the Bible? Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah. I, I remember you, you sent me that and I sent, I just sent yeah. you this thing. It's yeah. like, well, I mean, honestly, I think read sections that you don't read often or haven't read in a while. Mm-hmm. And I mean, dude, you, you go into the, just the, the crazy account that is judges. It's hard to be bored in judges. Mm-hmm. Um, or you go to the treasure trove that is Jeremiah and mm-hmm. you just see just the love of, of Yahweh and, and who he is and just the compassion and, and, and what it is to to have a faithful ministry that doesn't look like people listening to you. Mm-hmm. Um, or you just you look at the Proverbs and you just you learn. I mean, so I think you look at these different sections and especially some of the more crispy parts of your Bible. There's a lot to be learned about mm-hmm. faithfulness, about who God is and what God has done mm-hmm. and, and, and God's character. Yeah. So what are the some some of the key facts to if you think about the Old Testament, just you know, three or four things that just pop off the top of your head about just some key facts about that portion of our Bibles and kind of maybe what God's doing there, what God's, mm-hmm. you know, I just didn't know. I wanted to ask what the th- first thoughts that maybe yeah. pop off your head when it comes to that. Okay, well, understand that there's a chronology going on mm-hmm. here. You know, the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, like understand what's going on there uh, about Yahweh making a covenant with Abraham in Genesis 12. Mm-hmm. And then that, that he's going to have this nation, Israel, who's kind of his selected nation. Right. So and then that's that's kind of really important because then you're going to follow that story of Israel uh, for a while there. And so those things are that's helpful to remember. Understand when you jump into one of these books, like whenever I do uh, preach uh, on one of the narrative sections of the Old Testament, I'll do a where are we in in history. Right. So that way we know, Okay, we know that they've been given they've been out of Egypt and then they brought into this land. And then they wandered around for a while Then they conquest the land. Now they're supposed to drive the people out of the land. That's where we are in Judges. And then. Uh, you get to Samuel. So, okay, now they didn't actually do all that, but now they want a king. And then, you know, get to kings. Well, kings have been bad. Well, that's also in Chronicles. And so I think, like we've talked about, getting a study Bible and just kind of yeah. figure out where you are in the context of history. That's what I was just about to say. Yeah, get, yeah. get the study Bible yeah. out. Yeah. And uh, so I'd say understand there's a chronology there. Understand that uh, these believers were under a different covenant. Uh, that's also helpful to know. Um, just understand that they're under the Mosaic Sinaitic covenant, and we are under a new covenant, right? And as New Testament believers, and so there's some 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 differences there. Mm-hmm. And then uh, I, I would say those are like some of the some of the big things. Yeah. And also understand that Old Testament is descriptive, not always prescriptive, mm-hmm. right? Uh, you know, uh, we're we're teaching on Gideon tonight, and uh, dude had a lot of wives. Not a good thing to do. No, uh, that no, was not something that the not. Lord looked upon. Although he's in Hebrews eleven, although he's he's you know a man of faith, doesn't mean everything that he did was good or that you should follow. Yeah, we all everybody has imperfections, but don't do that one. That yeah, one's not no, a good that's, one to do. A, that's a bad one. Um, so what what well, as I'm reading the Old Testament, as you know, our, our listeners are are reading the Old Testament. Are there any you know questions? Because it's good to ask questions of oh, the yeah. Bible. It's mm-hmm. good to ask questions of the text and bring things out that we might not. Uh, you know, if we weren't asking questions. So what are mm-hmm. some key questions to ask when reading the Old Testament? Yeah, um, I think asking what happened before, mm-hmm. where are we now? Um, and then I think probably the number one that I think will unlock the Old Testament for a lot of people and really help you uh, not, um, you know, destroy and, and really malign and, and make the Old Testament all about you when it's not about mm-hmm. you and that kind of thing is just ask yourself, what is Yahweh doing in this passage? I think that's just like one of the number one questions to ask. What is Yahweh doing? And and that way, it just kind of keeps you from getting weird with it. Um, And it kind of keeps the main thing the main thing. Because it's real easy to get distracted about you know, the, the men and they're lapping like dogs and, and like, is that a good thing? Is that a bad thing? Does that mean that they were vigilant? No, it just means mm-hmm. that Yahweh was thinning the herd. Like mm-hmm. that's what's happening in that passage. We can get distracted by the details, but what we're seeing there is that Yahweh's strength is being made perfect in weakness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so and it keeps, it keeps it about God. Yeah. 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 About yeah. God. Mm-hmm. That's the biggest it's, thing. It's so easy to turn Elijah into you or David, your problems or, or whatever those things are, man. 
and, and mm-hmm. that is to do a disservice to the Old Testament. Yeah. And uh, though it can definitely be confusing, and I will tell anyone that desires to study the First Testament, it does not yield up its gold easily. Um, mm-hmm. If you are in Judges eight, it is going to be hard for you, harder for you than Romans eight to just open it up and really get something out of it. Mm-hmm. But man, is it is such a blessing to dive in and really cherish the word of God and what it has to say, all sections of it. And just because it's not easy doesn't mean it's not worth it. Oh yeah. Amen. So, Amen. But, well, thank you for listening to this episode of the word unbound. We pray this information was helpful to you. And if it was, feel free to give us a follow and share our content to stay updated. And um, we'll see you next time. See you later.